It's almost as though Bruce Willis himself is telling Germans where to drive or where to buy their tires from. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kelly again and welcome back to my channel. I came across an interesting statistic the other day that I wanted to share with you guys. I learned that over 70% of Germans claim that they can speak English and yet the overwhelming majority of Germans prefer to watch Hollywood productions in their native language of German. In fact, Germany has one of the largest dubbing industries in the world and it ranks among the top four countries for for most dubbed TV shows and movies. So this really got me wondering, what exactly are the impacts of dubbing all of these TV shows and movies into German? It's clear to anyone who's ever walked by a movie theater or turned on a TV in Germany that the dubbing culture there is really strong, which fuels a massive voice acting industry. And yet there is still only a finite number of really good German voice actors, which means that you're probably not going to get a perfect matchup between the Hollywood actor's voice and the German voice actor's voice. So when I see a character that I'm really familiar with, I have a very specific tone of voice in my mind when I see that character. And then when I see the German dubbed version of that character and a totally different voice comes out of their mouth, Whole, it can be somewhat a jarring experience because it's not what I'm expecting to hear. But it's even weirder for me to think that a German who's always used to seeing the German dubbed version of that character might have that same sort of jarring experience whenever they see the OV or the original version of that character and hears the real Hollywood actor's voice. They might even be disappointed to hear Keanu Reeves' real voice, and not the voice of Benjamin Foltz, who's the German voice actor often cast to dub over Keanu Reeves' characters. Even further, dubbing can cause so much of a character to be lost. I remember watching an episode of Saturday Night Live with Misha, and Vanessa Bayer was doing an impression of Jennifer Aniston playing Rachel Green in the TV show Friends. I was pretty much emphatic about what a great impression Vanessa had done of Rachel Green because she got all of her little isms and quirks and inflections down pie. And I remember looking over at Misha and he's looking back at me like I'm crazy, as he often does, because this wasn't the version of Rachel Green he knew. Misha knew the German dubbed version of Rachel and the German dubbed version of Rachel is pretty much void of all those little noises that became such a strong part of her character on the original version of the TV show Friends. No! <laughs> Shoot, Another good example is Fran Drescher, a character on the TV show The Nanny, which I remember watching as a kid. Fran's voice has a distinctively strong nasal resonance. Well, you said you were beyond words. <laughs> now, if you can believe it, that's the actor's real voice, but it quickly became a huge part of Fran Drescher's character. But in the German dubbed version of The Nanny, the voice actor for Fran Drescher didn't have that same or any nasal resonance. Sie haben doch gesagt, Ihnen fehlen die Worte. And so a part of Fran Drescher's character is lost through the dubbing. But maybe it's not even the tone of voice itself. Maybe it's an accent. There are quite a few Hollywood productions that feature characters with a strong southern drawl. And that southern drawl can't be translated or just replaced with the German version of a southern accent, which would be the Bavarian accent. So in the movie Django, which is about slavery in the US, the character Leonardo DiCaprio plays is a southern slave owner, and he has this thick southern drawl that's critical to the credibility of his character. Oh no, we got a supply going on that's a good bit of fun. However, in the German dubbed version of Django, Leonardo DiCaprio's character is completely absent of this southern accent. 
Wir zu uns, wir haben gerade einen Kampf laufen. Das ist ein hübscher Spaß. And so not just that character, but really the entire movie loses that layer of authenticity. And there's something really, really bizarre about watching a World War II movie and hearing American soldiers speaking in German. Like watching Inglorious Bastards and hearing Brad Pitt's characters speaking in German about taking down Nazis and Germans. Zivilisten getarnt über Frankreich abgesetzt. Wir haben nur eine Aufgabe, eine einzige. Nazis töten. It really makes the movie lose some authenticity. And also, some scenes just won't work, like when Brad Pitt's character is interrogating a German. In the original version, Brad Pitt asks the prisoner a question in English, and then a translator repeats the question in German. But in the dubbed version, Brad Pitt's character is asking the question in German, and then the translator is just repeating it again in German. Okay, so going back to the movie Django, one of the main characters is Dr. Schultz, who's a German living in the United States and working as a sort of slave owner bounty hunter. He partners with a former slave named Django, who was separated from his wife, Broomhilda. Broomhilda is able to speak both German and English because of her upbringing. So in the movie, Schultz and Django are able to locate Broomhilda, and then there's a very critical scene where Schultz chooses to speak to Broomhilda in German so that anybody who might be listening in on their conversation can't understand what they're saying to each other. When watching the original version of Django, the switch from English to German provides a lot of context that makes that scene work, but when you're watching the German dubbed version of Django, the characters simply continue to speak in the exact same language they've been speaking in throughout the entire movie. So it loses that context and the scene just doesn't really work as well. In fact, it might be a little confusing. Or sometimes the humor of a scene can't be directly translated because of a difference in syntax or pronunciation between English and German. There's a TV show called Family Guy, which is really well known for its many running gags, one of which is the absolutely incessant repetition of certain words or phrases. In one of the episodes, there's a scene where two of the characters are talking about Cool Whip and the way that one character, Stewie, pronounces the WH in Whip. Cool Whip. Cool Whip. You're saying it weird. Why are you putting so much emphasis on the H? What are you talking about? I'm just saying it. Cool whip. You put cool whip on pie. Pie tastes better with cool whip. This joke revolves around the sort of old-fashioned way of pronouncing WH words, where it sounds like the H is pronounced ahead of the W. Now, the German-dubbed version of this scene attempts to mimic the same humor, but by using the word Schlagsahne for whipped cream and mispronouncing the G as a CH. Schlagsahne? Schlagsahne, ja? Du meinst Schlagsahne. Yeah, Schlagsahne. 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 The translation of this joke into German, although it was a fairly good attempt, loses a lot of its humor because it just lacks the same context. And then, of course, a lot can be lost in the translation of the script, especially if matching the words to the lip movements of the Hollywood actor or fitting the words into a specified amount of time takes priority over directly and accurately translating the script. And of course, sometimes the German voice actors take the liberty to make modifications to the script while they're recording. Another component of the dubbing industry is that oftentimes a German voice actor will actually be paired with a Hollywood actor. So for example, if a movie features Johnny Depp, chances are David Nathan will be hired on as the German voice actor to dub Johnny Depp. So for a lot of Germans who regularly watch German dubbed movies, whenever they see a picture or a quick clip of Johnny Depp, they won't associate it with Johnny Depp's actual voice. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. But rather, they'll associate it with David Nathan's voice. And not only that, but David Nathan is also paired with a couple other big Hollywood actors, like Christian Bale and the now deceased Paul Walker. So again, to a German who prefers to watch German dubbed movies, these three actors all have the exact same voice, 
Which makes me wonder what would happen if there was a movie that featured both Johnny Depp and Christian Bale? Would David Nathan dub for both actors in the movie? Or would they decide to cast a different German voice actor for one of the two? And how would the German audience feel about that? If you're used to hearing David Nathan's voice coming out of both Johnny Depp and Christian Bale, would it be disruptive for you to hear a totally different voice coming out of them? Because this is this is the voice that you know them as. So these are the things that keep me up at night. And if you know the answer, please put it in the comments below because it really needs some sleep. Oh, and as a funny side note, the German voice actor who dubs for Bruce Willis has also done some voiceover work for GPS navigation systems in Germany as well as some radio advertisements. And so again, for the majority of Germans who watch German dubbed versions of his movies, it's almost as though Bruce Willis himself is telling Germans where to drive or where to buy their tires from. But sadly, even though a lot of Germans will very very easily recognize the voice of David Nathan, they may not even know his name. As recently as 2014, Germany finally decided that voice actors do have a right to be named in the credits of the films for which they performed. But even still, a lot of German voice actors go relatively unacknowledged for their talents. There is, however, an annual award ceremony called the German Dubbing Awards that recognizes and honors the best of the best of the German dubbing industry. So up until this point, I focused on how the spoken word can be dubbed and translated, but of course the written word can be translated as well. Movie titles, for example, may have a German version, and that German version may or may not exactly or at all match the English title. And so there are Germans who only know movies according to its German title and not the English title. Which which makes for a really fun back and forth between Misha and me or Misha and my friends when we ask him if he's seen a particular movie, which of course we're referencing by its English title, and Misha won't necessarily recognize it as its English title, because maybe the German title took some liberties with the translation. For example, my dad loves the movie Airplane, and he once asked Misha if he'd ever seen it, and Misha said he had never even heard of it. Now one might assume that a movie was such a a simple title, one word, airplane, would be directly translated into the German word for airplane, Flugzeug. But that's not what happened. It's called this. But sometimes directly translating the movie title from English into German is the big mistake. For example, the Star Wars movie entitled The Last Jedi was directly translated into Die Letzten Jedi in German. Now in English, the phrase The Last Jedi doesn't distinguish exactly how many Jedi it's referencing. It could be one, it could be 50, because there's only one definite article in English, the. But in German, there are three definite articles, der, die, and das, each of which tells you the gender of the noun it precedes or whether it's singular or plural. Die means that it's feminine or plural. So by saying die letzten Jedi, Germans were able to surmise that the movie was about an entire group of Jedi and not just one, which was a really big spoiler. I also want to point out that, especially in more recent movies and TV shows, there may be text appearing on the screen. For example, if a character is reading an email or sending a text message. And if the budget production is high enough and it's deemed necessary that the viewer is able to read and understand that text, then that text will be translated via a little animation that will appear on the screen. Or maybe words will come up on the bottom of the screen, sort of like a closed caption, so that the viewer understands what that text says. But sometimes, if it isn't too disruptive for that text to not be translated, then it might not be. For example, in the TV show The Big Bang Theory, which I've learned is a very popular show in Germany and I found that to be kind of surprising, 
Anyway, in that show, there are two characters named Sheldon and Amy, and they have a show, sort of within the show, called Fun With Flags. Now, when they film their show, they always have a backdrop behind them that reads Fun With Flags, and that won't be translated in the German dubbed version. Most likely because whenever they do the introduction to their show, they always say Fun With Flags while literally pointing at the backdrop. Sheldon Cooper presented Spaß mit Flags. And so the translation of that text becomes very easily apparent to the viewer. I find the whole topic of the dubbing industry in Germany to be fascinating. Obviously, I just talked to you guys for so long about it. Um, and I didn't even touch on some things like books. Uh, I heard the Game of Thrones series being translated into German had some hiccups or the video game industry and how different video games are localized for the German market. But I think I'm going to stop there. I've rambled on long enough and I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. I specifically would like to know if you prefer to watch the German dubbed version of Hollywood productions or if you like to watch the OV or the original version and why or why not. Who's your favorite German voice actor? Who can you absolutely not stand? I'm curious about all this so let me know what you guys have to say in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet go ahead and click that subscribe button. Thanks so much to my patrons for all the support you've given me and I will see you guys next time. Bye!